right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome back to my five Victorian novels about series. Today I'm going to be telling you about five Victorian novels all set in big spooky country houses. If you haven't seen one of these videos before, I'll link down below my playlist of all my five Victorian novels about series. Um, in this series, I basically make little videos where I talk about five Victorian novels that all are about a particular theme or feature a particular element. And today we're going to be talking about Victorian novels that feature spooky country houses. This is something that I really, really enjoy. My debut novel, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall, is coming out very soon and it is a work of historical fiction set in the Victorian period, set at a big spooky country house and I really enjoy the Victorian trope of the spooky country house so I thought today I would talk about some of my favourite big spooky houses from Victorian literature. So let's start off with the wonderful sensation novel Uncle Silas by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. This features um, two spooky houses in a way um, but the main spooky house, the spooky house um, that our main character Maud um, travels to when she has to live um, and be looked after by her mysterious Uncle Silas. Um, the spooky house that she travels to there is a house called Bartram Ho. I think that's how I say it. We know from the beginning of this fantastic sensation novel that Maud's Uncle Silas um, has a bit of a mysterious ominous reputation because many years ago a man was found dead in a room in Barton Ho and because the room was locked from the inside it was deemed that it must have been suicide but everyone suspected that it might have been murder because Silas had reasons for wishing this man dead and this place is of course going to be Maud's new home and she's going to have to live with her mysterious creepy uncle Silas and her creepy in a whole different way cousin and everything goes on from there. It is a fantastic book and I feel like the way Barton Ho is drawn and the creepiness of this house is just really really wonderful. I also wanted to mention Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and the wonderful Thornfield Hall. If you don't know the story of Jane Eyre, it's a buildings roman, a coming of age story following Jane Eyre from her childhood to her adulthood and what happens when she, at the age of 18, travels to a place called Thornfield Hall to become the governess there. I feel like Charlotte Bronte creates the atmosphere at Thornfield Hall so well. The strange noises and laughs that Jane sometimes hears and the weird mysterious things that just keep on happening at Thornfield Hall. I feel like what is really interesting about Thornfield Hall in Jane Eyre is that Thornfield Hall is both a big spooky house and also a home like it is Jane's home and it's the first place she's ever really felt at home in her life she has a real strong connection for the place and a love for the place but also it has this kind of sinister atmosphere as well um, and I feel like the combination of those two things just works wonderfully next up is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon the house of Audley Court where Lady Audley lives with her husband is I think really interestingly drawn this is a wonderful sensation novel we're partly following Lady Audley but we're mostly following Robert Audley who is a relation of her husband's and um, who is looking into the mysterious disappearance of his friend um, and I feel like Audley Court and especially like the grounds and the surrounding countryside um, are drawn so well and so interestingly here. It's a really fantastic novel with a great spooky country house. Next I wanted to mention The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. There are multiple big country houses in The Woman in White um, but the one I'm really thinking of is Blackwater Park. Blackwater Park is I think possibly the most terrifying place of all of these. Let me try and tell you a little bit about the story of The Woman in White. We're following from the beginning a man called Walter. He's a drawing master and he is soon to embark on a new position um, teaching drawing to two young women um, at a country house, not Blackwater Park. And one day while he is walking home, he encounters a mysterious woman in white on the road who asks for his help and everything kind of goes on from there. I can't really explain how the characters get to Blackwater Park without spoilers, but there is a section of this book set at Blackwater Park and it is so claustrophobic and so tense and so amazing. And I feel like Blackwater Park as a creepy house um, is so well described and the kind of oppressive, nature of it as a building um, as well as everything that's going on there is just fantastic highly recommend the woman in white and yeah blackwater park is probably the most spooky sinister one of all of these houses finally i wanted to mention great expectations by charles dickens um, and the amazing satis house which features in great expectations which is where miss haversham lives great expectations is a coming of age story about a little boy called pip um who grows up in a kind of working class environment he's going to be a blacksmith until one day he is told that he has a patron that he has great expectations and is going to be a gentleman but anyway that doesn't matter to what we're talking about here what is really important is that um when he is a child pip is sent to 
play for um, and to entertain a woman who lives nearby called Miss Havisham. Miss Havisham is a mysterious woman who lives in a big creepy house um, and many years ago Miss Havisham was meant to be married but her groom didn't show up to the wedding, left her at the altar and as such Miss Havisham has kept everything exactly the same in the house as it always was. All the clocks are stopped at the time when her husband-to-be didn't show up. Um, she still wears her wedding dress um, and Satis House has been kept in this kind of state of stasis, I suppose. And I feel like Satis House is so well created in Great Expectations and such an interesting place. Miss Havisham and the house and the kind of creepy, sinister, solemn, sad air over it is just so fantastically drawn that I really, really love it. It's such a fantastic novel and Satis House is such a fantastic Setting. So there we go, those are five wonderful Victorian novels that feature big spooky houses. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Do let me know down in the comments below um, what your favourite big spooky houses are in Victorian literature. Obviously there are many other houses I could have spoken about, you know, Wuthering Heights for one, um, but I thought I would just focus on these five today. So that's all for now. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.